the sidelines for a long time Now I'm finally getting in the game It's about time This is my time This is my time The only thing I consider impossible is losing I've been waiting on the sidelines for a long time Now I'm finally getting in the game It's about time This is my time This is my time The only thing I consider impossible is losing What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Let me get my lights on. You know, we're in a dark room right now. All right, all right, hold on, y'all. Hit that like button. Oh, boy. Uh, we're pretty much going to continue where we left off um, yesterday with the um, film study. We're going to keep going through it. Like I said, um, Miami Dolphins 2023 film study. This is part two. It's probably going to be 50 parts when we're done because we're doing the whole season. We're starting from the last, from the Chiefs game, all the way down to the Chargers from the beginning of the season. So we're going backwards, all right? Yesterday, we um, saw that there were some issues, um, you know, with just pretty much execution um, from the team. And Mike McDaniel um, pretty much dialing in predetermined plays. We also saw – that was on the first drive. On the second drive of that game, we saw Tua just um, blew some huge opportunities and some bad throws, you know, um, interception. Um, 
you know, just bad decision making on the field, taking the lesser of the better opportunities, um, um, more predetermined stuff. So the Chiefs game already starting out showing that, you know, this team executing bad. And um, in the second drive, two would did, did, uh, wish he could get that whole drive back. Um, and again, um, right now I'm seeing so far in this game, Mike McDaniel and I have the team not executing, which is on Mike McDaniel, and then um, Tua not making good decisions in the second drive with about eight plays, all right? All right, let's continue, though. Let's pick up where we left off um, in the film study. And as you can see, um, this is the third drive that we're starting now, all right? Having a conversation about the third drive. And we'll go from there and we'll just keep going, you know, drive after drive after drive, game after game after game, and get all the way through to um, week one eventually by hopefully the middle of the offseason. All right. Um, let's do it. So here we go starting out again. The Chiefs look like they're finally coming out of that five-man defensive line. So now they're going four, but they still have that cover two look. They've been running quarters quite a bit in this game, but this looks like a dedicated cover two um, with the four-three um, scheme. But we don't know. I don't know if this up corner at the top of the screen is going to come on the blitz to make it five again, and that safety is going to switch over. I have no idea. Also, I put some stats out last night that showed, um, you know, the some of the advanced stats from the season came out, and it showed that the Dolphins were the second. The Dolphins were the team that was second least. Um, uh, hiding coverage um, from. And what do I mean by that? The defenses we play, they only disguise coverage 24% of the time. It was the second lowest amount. Basically, defenses made it easy on us this season. They, you know, 75%, 76% of the time, they never disguise coverage. It was what it was. And that's why, you know, Tua thrive for the most part, because at the end of the day, pre-snap, he could see what's going on. And 70, 76% of the time, the defense never tried to hide what they were doing. They just showed the base and they stayed in it. Um, and I, I, I'd probably say the better teams like the Chiefs um, in Baltimore and teams like that were the big part of that 24% and why we look so bad. So keep that in mind when people say, oh, you know, this is what was accomplished. Teams made it easy for this man. The second least amount of disguise coverage in the NFL. Okay. How do they determine that? They look at it pre-snap like this one right here. looks like cover two. And if it switches to cover one, that's a disguise. Okay. And now if everybody on the defense does the role of cover two, then they didn't disguise. So 76% um, of the time they – ran what they showed pre-snap, which was second highest in the NFL. You know who was first? Josh Allen. Teams didn't switch it up on him either. He was number one, where they showed you and they executed what they showed. So um, it was, life was real easy for both quarterbacks in that regards, all right? And guess who gets which team disguise coverage the most in the NFL? It wasn't the Dolphins. Well, I'll just tell you the Dolphins. We disguise coverage on our defense the third most in the NFL. Third most in the NFL, the Miami Dolphins disguise coverage. But yet in real life in the game, teams didn't do that to us. Okay? Um, I forgot the exact number. It was like 50-something like percent of the time or something. But um, let's dive into this film. Let's see what we got here. Tyreek on the right. I mean, the left, Waddle on the right. Let's see what we get. All right, once again, man press coverage. Mm, oh, well, let's let it play, and then we'll we'll reverse it out. All right, so this is interesting. This is the same play from early in the game that we talked about yesterday where Waddle was the receiver at the bottom, and he ran into the tight end. I still don't like the design of this play, and here's why. Look how Tyreek has to go all the way around to avoid the tight end. Watch this. Look at Tyreek at the bottom. Instead of being able to run smoothly, he has to double around the guy 
And I understand they got the guy motioning to sell the run, which is good. It got the guys faking, but Tyreek has to go wide around and then to recover. And last time, Waddle ran into the defender right there as well. So it looked like we came right back to a play that we already ran in the game. We just switched Tyreek and Waddle, um, their roles in this. So Tua right here. Um, now, I know some people, um, you take the check down with Tyreek because he's going to win around the corner. That Waddle route at the top, um, some may not see it that way, but that's also open. If you go over the top, that's a big game. But I don't have a problem with taking the underneath because you have – a lot of pay dirt right here, and you want to minimize the difficulty, and you definitely want to pick up the first down if you can. So get it to Tyree, let him use his speed, and he's about two yards short of the first. So I like the execution this time. Um, I just still don't like that whole tight end situation running into him. I don't like that situation having to go around him and reroute. Because I feel like if Tyreek was out here already, if he didn't have that, he would have caught that ball and been able to rip up the sideline for a much bigger game. See, I, see, Tyreek would have probably already been up in this area if he didn't have to kind of go around the tight end. And it would have been a huge, a much bigger opportunity. So I hope they see that and um, try to figure out a way how they can get that motion a little cleaner. Uh, real quick, because I think um, we having a discrepancy. Um, Waddle ain't open. Stop it. Uh, again, I think the Miami Dolphins made the Tua Tagovailoa made the right decision by going with Tyreek here. But in the NFL, once again, this is open. But these are big boy throws. These are big boy throws towards the sideline. Waddle has a step on his guy. Those are big boy throws. So don't say Waddle isn't open. That is NFL open. And if you want to make that big boy throw for the big game, that's what makes you a superstar. Now, I'm not asking Tua to make that throw. I like the decision to come right underneath the Tyreek Hill. I like that decision. But let's not sit here and make it seem like this isn't a big opportunity with Waddle on that play. Okay? All right, let's move forward to the next play. All right, two to the right, tight end over there as well. Tyreek in motion again. Um, once again, looks like quarters. Yep, it looks like quarters. Um, and, okay, this play is very interesting to me, and, and I'm going to tell you why. This is the touchdown play. It ended up working out. But this play kind of, to me, it also proves – that we already know where we're going to go with the ball. We are not progression-based. A deep ball can't be your first progression, right? We know that. The deep ball is not your first progression. Now, once again, let's make sure we get this clear first. We got a touchdown, great play, but I want to show you the behaviors of our offense are not progression-based. Now, since it's not progression-based, it worked out in our favor this time because we scored a touchdown, the only touchdown of the game. But watch this. If we were progression-based, right here we should be having a first read. If we're first reading, what do you think that first read is? It's a wide-open guy that we hit all the time. You see, the, you see, you, you see right here? If this is progression-based, your first read should be here. The second should probably be over in the flat if he clears. And if it's not there, you look deep to see if it's there. But what we do is we stare down where we want to go. We wait for it to become open, and then we let it fly. And I'm not complaining about this play um, because of the turnout of it. But this is more proof that this is not a progression-based offense. It's just not. We don't require progressions. You cannot tell me, oh, well, he – see, let me tell you something. See the safety here? If this safety was all over this man, people would have been saying, oh, this was his first read, but it wasn't there, so he went up top. That's what they would have been saying. That's what they would have been saying. But look at this. Now, if the safety, and, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, they got caught on this play with the play action. 
They sold out on the run on this play. Okay? Seven in the box. They sold out. That's why they're screwed right now. But this offense is in progression base. It already knows. And let me show you even more proof why. Let me show you proof why. I want you to pay attention to Waddle right here. You see Waddle at the bottom of the screen? You tell me in the comment section, yes or no, is he running a route? Is he running a route? And look at him. He pointed deep. They already knew. And this is the thing that I don't like about our offense. We're going to take a shot deep to Tyreek on this. What kind of backyard offense is that? They don't know what coverage going to be ran or nothing. It's just a matter of we're going to take a shot deep to Tyreek here. And this is why if the safety bails deep in double coverage, this is why Tua sometimes throw it in double coverage. These are those plays that we get picked off on. Luckily, it worked out this time. Luckily, it worked out this time. Waddle knew it from the beginning. We're going deep to Tyreek. Look at Waddle on this. So what if Tyreek isn't open? Are we just saying Waddle doesn't have a route? And this is not the problem that I have with this offense. There's no real design. It's just a matter of Tyreek go. We're going to take a shot to you. If Tyreek was covered and the safety was in a good position, what if they would have messed up and Waddle was wide open? He wouldn't have even been looking for the ball. And it doesn't always work. And that's what we need to remember. It does not always work. Because what we're also going to find are some plays where they cover it well, but then we have nowhere to go. We don't know. We panic. We don't know what to do. You know those plays we like, he's wide open right there. But no, he was staring down the deep ball. Luckily, he didn't throw it. This is the issue with this offense. And the sad part is, since it was a touchdown, people won't recognize the issue. But they won't also recognize the plays where it doesn't work and we have nowhere to go and we panic. They won't recognize this is why. Because we get so caught up into when it does work. Terrible. If it was progression based, we would have hit the seam right there. Bam, first down. Great throw. It worked out. But this is the issue with the offense. Oh, by the way, I haven't been writing. So, first play, um, rerun. Um, Um, fake jet sweep flat to reek same waddle play. My bad, y'all. Um, same waddle play, better execution, big boy throw op. Not mad at. Check down. All right, second play. Touchdown. Tyreek. Proof of no plan, no progressions. And, and let me say this. When I say no progressions, I'm not talking about Tua. This is McDaniel. This is a McDaniel issue. And the reason why it's a McDaniel issue, Waddle tells us it's a McDaniel issue. Because if Waddle ran a crisp route trying to get open and turn around looking for the ball, I would say this was on Tua. He's not going through progressions. But Mike McDaniel dialing up plays, all right, we're going to run this play. We're taking a shot to Tyreek. Basically, what you're telling me is we're taking a shot to Tyreek even if it's not open. That's basically what you're telling me. You're cutting half the field off because Waddle out there blocking. Not even blocking. He turns around and looks. It ain't even a fake run to the left side, the Waddle side. 
Moster didn't run a route. Waddle already knows where it's going. <laughs> Waddle didn't even know the ball was gone and he put his hand up. Like, oh, we're going deep. This isn't on Tua. This is on Mike McDaniel. No progression plan. All on McDaniel. Sorry, I'm taking notes of every play. That's why I'm repeating this while I'm writing. Because I want to have my notes as we're doing this. Do we see a common trend throughout the whole season? See, and I'm glad that we're starting all the way back to when we had bad games and working our way back to the good games because I'm going to show y'all even in the good games when everything's working and it's going perfect, how we're just flinging it recklessly without any plan, but it's working. And then it stops working as teams start to see what you're doing. Shout out to the... um. To Finn, some um, 209 with the super chat said 49ers 30, KC 27. 49ers will win by three. Man, I just can't go against the Chiefs, bro. I mean, you might be right. I just, it's just something about it. I can't. So the QB has no discretion. Here's the thing you definitely want to put onus on the quarterback, but I can't. What I just saw from Waddle absolves Tua from this mess, it absolves him. Now, but this is why I keep arguing with people about you're not developing this man. You're telling him where to throw the ball. Now, this don't happen on every play. Let's get that straight. We either pick the guy we're throwing to or we cut half the field off and say we're only working this half. You see what I'm saying? But this is why I argue you're not developing Tua. So I want to ask everybody watching right now. Any quarterback in the NFL on that play, in that huddle, if the coach said, we're going to go to Tyreek D, who wouldn't have made that play? Now, of course, out of 32 starting quarterbacks, you might have, you know, 12 of them that overthrow it or, or you know, or six of them that overthrow it, six of them that underthrow it to screw it up. Well, two are underthrew it technically, so it don't matter. Now, you, you might have six quarterbacks that screw it up, but tell me who wasn't going to get that touchdown if it was already predetermined by your coach, we taking a shot to Tyreek. And they break the huddle, they run the play, and they send the shot to Tyreek. Is this something specific to Tua and special to Tua if you already predetermined in it? No. And this is why I try to tell people, man, them numbers went up because of McDaniel. But at the same token, if, if Tua was really executing at that new level, he would easily have 6,000 yards because he wouldn't miss on opportunities like that when the check down is there and they, and they guard that well. So sometimes Tua would go deep and we'd be like, why would he even throw that? Here you go. This is why. Because it's the play Mike McDaniel called in. We're taking a shot right here. This is it. We're taking a shot. And by the way, let me go back. Let me see if it was in the sweet zone by the 40-something yard line. Oh, it was on the opposite side of the field. This is a rare case. Because usually they don't take the shot unless it's around this area right here. Because that's where Tua's arm can lead you in the end zone. But I guess it's still the same. That's why I was like 10 yards short of the end zone. Put it up. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense now. So... At the end of the day, this is a McDaniel issue. This is why I was trying to tell y'all I'm a little less high. On, I'm, a, I'm actually a McDaniel advocate, and now I'm starting to get a, a really concerned about Mike McDaniel. He ain't nearly what we're making him out to be. He ain't nearly what, what, what we're making him out to be. And he ain't doing two or no favors. All he did, He's like ultimately truly hiding uh, or making life, and, and nothing's wrong with making life easier for Tua, but you ain't challenging him for growth. I don't know, man. 
I don't know about this, y'all. All right, let's get to our next offensive um, possession. Uh, we got a turnover on downs on this drive. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. Similar formation, but now they check. Now they put they went back to the five on the line, so that's interesting. So this might have been a play they wanted to take a shot again, but they checked at the line because why? They're really looking at single high safety. They're looking at a single high. This corner coming downhill shows you that he really has either the tight end, um, depending on if they switch or waddle. So it's two on two over here. Linebacker spying the running back. This guy is the has the tight end right here, and this guy has him. So this is single high right here. So we got a loaded box in single high coverage. That's why the whole team, when they went to the line of scrimmage, they all tapped the helmet because they all recognized, okay, we can't run the play that we wanted because we got a lo loaded box. But we tap our helmet and we're running out of this. Now, what do we see from a mismatch standpoint? Give me a second. Let me count some numbers here. Let's see if they run to the right. Nope, they go to the left. They seal the edge. That's some good lane integrity and great run by Moster there. I actually like that because the numbers didn't favor Miami on this. Waddle, that's the that's the that's the change in block right there. He sealed the edge right here. Waddle for the offense sealed the edge. Bam, right there. That's what made it right here. Waddle sealing that edge allowed us to have a lead blocker. If Waddle didn't seal that edge, this rusher would have got right back here um, to disrupt what we were trying to do. And then Engle was in Waddle holding it. I love it, Waddle. I love it. And fighting for it and falling to almost falling for it. Good job, Waddle. Waddle made this run. Very good job, Waddle. All that other stuff with Armstead and them up here, that's non-consequential because at the end of the day, it stopped right there anyway. Very good job by Waddle on that. I mean, Waddle, great run blocking. Nice first down run. You got to also recognize audible out. They switched out of the play. The whole offense. That's one of those plays. If we get this look, we run this. If we get that look, we run that. And they all got one look that wasn't what they called originally. They all tapped the helmet so they knew what the switch was. All right. So many QBs of old call their own plays. How had not risked um, card and it made them much more competitive. It kept their heads in the game on every play. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, they studied the playbook and did all of that, you know. Um, all right, here we go. Two to the right. No receiver at the bottom. Usually they're going to motion out of this. Uh, let's see if they do or not. Nope. So we're running it straight up. All right, so we got another run coming back the other way. So the Chiefs giving up some chunks and look like no resistance. Let me see what's going on here. All right. All right, that's also a bad angle by the Chiefs. Um, solid run. Solid run there. Right here, number 72, um, Armstead actually gets beat. But luckily, he got beat, and it worked in his favor because it actually helped him seal seal the inside right there. So he seals him out, and that allows him to get around the corner. Good job. Number 20 scared to tackle because it's cold for the Chiefs, too. We weren't the only ones making business decisions. All right, let me see here. Solid run. Now, that run ain't go for much, but it was still solid. Solid run, Armstead, set, offensive edge. Okay, number five. Let's keep it going. 
All right, here we go. Back to quarters. Again, you can see quarters when you got the two safeties. It looked like cover two, but these guys are not base aligned with the receivers. They have their quarters, okay? So this, this is really designed to prevent the deep ball. Even when you go back to the touchdown, um, they just let Tyreek get that crease, that seam. So now you got two to the right technically chi um, trips because you got the um, tight end. Look like it might be 22 personnel if he comes up to the line. Pistol formation. Tua holding him, sends the motion. All right, we got a five-man D-line again. Or, or is it six? Six-man D-line. Yeah, straight quarters with one linebacker. This is what caught them deep last time, but this time we hand it off. And I like the fact that we got a solid run when they played it for the run. Now, it was only three yards, um, but I would have liked to see us attack the field on that play. I mean, when, when you're in this formation and you got quarters, like, like let's stop right here real quick. See, two is reading the defense. He sends in motion, and that's part of the problem. He this this is part of the issue here. Let me show y'all something. So right here, he's looking at five on the line, right? Three in the middle, one on the edge, and one at the top. They're all line guys. He don't know if this guy's gonna drop back, but he is on the line. Um, he's assuming that this guy has this guy, but he's in the box. You got a single linebacker. I really don't like this. You got to run, you got to run this guy deep and you got to run him on the um the little slant or the curl because you got it right here if they back out, but two is going to commit to the run, the play that that was called. They're committed. But that motion will never allow us to say hold up, hold up, hold up. We can take advantage of this look. It never will. And we commit everything to the run. Three-yard game. Anything under four is, is a loss. All right. Let me see here. All right, let me just write down. Let me go to my next page. I just ran out of space. All right, number four, fourth play. All right, here we go. Two to the left, one to the right. Another motion. Another handoff. Off the right end. This one gets another three to four yards, so we're probably going to have third and three coming up. No, third and one. It got more than a scene. Six yards. Trips to the right. Hmm. So this is the one that we had turnover on downs, by the way. So let's break this all down. All right. Again, you got five guys at the line of scrimmage. All right. Five guys. One more. My bad, y'all. Um, so, so right now, remember I was I was telling y'all this before. Every time we get trips on one side and we got three defenders with the safeties way back, this is where I want the quarterback to go ahead and audible and jump off one of them screens or shoot somebody deep, shoot somebody coming across, you know, um, and keep somebody shallow. Take advantage of the alignment right here. And it's the same RPO format pistol. So I don't know what this play is. I don't know if they're going to put it in the belly and fake it out. But this is, we need one yard. It's third and one. We got the tight end sitting over here. We don't know if this guy's taking them. But work that action. Let's see what we do. And above all, run the ball. But they're not. So most are already in motion. So now we got four on four because this guy's vacating. And I'm going to tell you now, this guy is vacating because most of the quick slants here, or whatever it may be, have all those wrinkles built in. What does McDaniel have? A screen. Screen checked up. Terrible by Raheem Mostert dropping the ball. But it would not have mattered because, look, the Chiefs would have been all over it anyway. You see where the first down sticks are? Let's just say he caught the ball and stopped right there. 50s on it. 
He's about to come through. 90s already catching. I think he would have probably made it up to the 45-yard line around here. Luckily, it was incomplete. That gave us a better shot to go for it again, right? Mike McDaniel, I don't know his obsession with throwing the ball on third and one. Not sure why. Another trips to the left, two to the right, empty backfield. Now I have a major issue here. This is a major issue. This is the play of all plays. Now, I've already seen this play a million times because I debated this play with other people. Tyreek Hill has two defenders committed on him. One-on-one -on -one at the bottom. Tyreek Hill, they put two guys on him, and this guy has Waddle right here. You got one-on-one -on -one with safety help on the opposite side. Now, this side has safety help, okay? Um, boy. Fourth and one. This is what McDaniel dials up. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. First of all, I don't like to play. But even though I don't like to play, it was there. Tua just hesitated. Let me show you. Waddle goes in motion. They shift. Waddle's man following him. And Tyreek literally has two players on him like he on punt team. And we run a pick. That is a pick. They didn't call it. And Tyreek, I love this action here. Fakes the out, coming back in. Right here, Tua, you got to make that play. Tua has to make this play. I understand that he's moving in the pocket, but this is where the playmakers. And honestly, let me ask y'all a question. Right here, Tua feeling that pressure, steps up. But when he steps up, is he looking to still throw the ball or is he stepping up just solely worrying about the pressure coming? Because he went, he went in a run mode. Right here, you got to fling that ball. You get free, now you're flinging the ball and the defender was able to catch up. Plays like that are tough, but they have to be made. They have to be made. Oh, my bad, it went by too fast. Those plays have to be made, man. And I ain't gonna lie to you. If this play was made, do you know how huge it would have been? Tyreek would have caught it right here because here's what bothers me too if you already know the play to it and you're gonna go there you gotta stand in there and take that hit and deliver the football bam right here instead of running the ball gotta be on his way if you already know the play right here and here's the problem here he's not looking He's looking down the middle of the field. And the only reason he sees Tyreek is because he had to run. Oh, there he is. Too late now. Too late. Tough. But pressure bearing down on him, that ain't an easy thing to do. It happens. All right, let's move forward to the next drive. And I stopped writing. All good. Pistol formation again. Two to the left, one to the right. One in motion. One by one. Handoff. No good. Okay. Why aren't we really getting runs on this RPO? The only runs that we've been successful on are the outside runs. But I need to understand what's happening in the trenches on these runs to where we can't get anything. So we obviously run it off the right side, right? Oh, my bad, y'all. I just went forward by mistake. Let me go back again. Let me see. See, this is the problem, y'all. See, this is what I'm talking about that mess makes me mad. 
This is the stuff I'm talking about that upsets me. Let's pause right here. We're going to run the ball on the right side of the line. How many blockers do you have? Three? You have three blockers against four defenders. Three blockers, four defenders. Stop running the pistol and put them in the in the in the halfback um the, the shotgun with the running back on his side. RPO. Here's why. Three blockers, four defenders. Because we run to the right. You can't count the left guard as a blocker because there's no edge he can set. He can get up here and try to push somebody in the back. But come on, man. This is terrible. Look at the tight end out here. Who's guarding him? A guy who's 15, 13 yards back? We got to see this. When you sent the motion, nobody followed. Are we caring about the alignment at all? And Tua, this ain't no RPO. You see how he's looking like, like he's staring? Like, oh, is the guy there? <laughs> You're not, this isn't a read. We already know what we're going to do. In the huddle, we're running the ball, even though it's supposed to be a read made there. Nowhere to go, a solid wall on that side. I just don't understand why we ever should have even ran that ball. Like, is there a such thing as, oh, look at the look. Yeah, I don't like this play. Let's let's go into this. Oh, I don't know. That's all Mike McDaniel, y'all. This is what Kurt Warner was talking about. There's no second option. There's no, you know, so pre-snap reads. We could put it on Tua because he had on the field. He got to recognize that, but we don't know if McDaniel even put that in his capacity. That ain't an excuse for him. That means it's just something he not doing. Or is it a part of this offense? And, and, and you're right, stay zooted. It's not an RPO because Tua is not a threat to run the ball. It's an RP. For the running back. Uh, run pass option. That's what it really is. Is it the run or the pass? But the full RPO is the quarterback being that threat too to run. But is is whatever you want to call it. It's it technically it's still a RPO because run. It, that's what we just did is ran the ball. Pass. It's an option between the two. But it's those quarterbacks who give you that third option that make them so dynamic. That's why they're so special. But I don't understand why we're running RPO with Tua when at the end of the day, he don't give you that third element to where it could be off the chart special. All right, so second and eight, we got trips to the left. Obviously, once again, there's no base of line here, okay? But I don't know what coverage is there in. We got single high. We got five guys at the line, okay? Um, but we're sending one in motion. Screen pass. And what's happening here? This guy is before the ball is even snapped. He sees it. He sees it. They're collapsing down. Let's see if we make something of it. Good job sealing the block, at least initially. Waddle lost right here. Hopefully Tyreek Speed can make up for it, but Waddle's losing. And he lost. Waddle lost. Waddle couldn't get a good block that time. And Waddle didn't want to be called for holding. Waddle messed this play up. Yeah, that's on Waddle. Now, not only Waddle, because I want to show you something too here. Um, yeah, Waddle messed it up because even though the defensive end came and helped tackle Hill, if um the other defender wasn't there, Hill would have been moving fast enough to avoid the defensive end getting him. So it's on Waddle. Wide receiver blocking. 
That's wide receiver blocking on that one. But another predetermined play, y'all. You can't tell me we got a progression-based offense, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. We don't went through. I think we're on like drive number five, and we ain't had a situation where there was a progression yet. We ain't had a situation where we we're posting that reading yet. It's just predetermined, and we're going there. And then again, this ain't about Tua. This ain't a knock on Tua. This is Mike McDaniel's offense. And why I'm telling y'all, he's not helping Tua. Tua actually hasn't gotten better. And not a knock on Tua. This is Mike McDaniel's doing. All right, here we go. Two to the right, two to the left on third and eight. Okay, single backfield, tight end already in motion to the right side. Um, now he's not on the line. So trips to the right, two to the left. So we got one on one on the on, at the bottom, no safety help. Obviously, this guy right here is gonna back out, maybe. So you like that situation. On the right side, you got trips. You got three guys, but once again, out of position, depending on what this linebacker does. And right now, you're showing a four man rush with a potential fifth right here. I'm not sure about 21. Looks like he may stay to take away the quick slant or something. Two is looking to the right. Now we got another guy at the line. So we're five deep now with this guy as the guesser. What is he going to do? A chan in motion. Now the safety backs out. So now we're getting a real look of cover two. Quarters, because as you can see up here, there's no base aligned. That tells you he has an area. It's not likely for him to have a man because Tyreek, whoever this is, can come straight across the field and he out of position. So once again, we got quarters. They tried to disguise it, but the motion um, basically exposes it. Okay? So with this coverage, depending on these linebackers, the middle of the field underneath may be wide open, but it just depends on these guys. What do they do? Oh, now we got this guy kind of following the motion. So obviously he was going to try to back out. But since the man in motion, we got to follow. And the safety's coming down here. Lordy, everything's switching up. One-on-one -on -one Tyreek Hill, safety help now. And all the action is moving to the right. Quads to the right. One to the left. And I'm going to tell you now, this is a difficult for two to read right here. Let's see what happens. False start on the offense, Tyreek Hill. False start on the offense. Now, it's interesting. I want to know why, because it looked like Tua delayed. And maybe that's a good thing. No. That's predetermined. They went in, when they went in the huddle, Tyreek screwed this up. They wanted to try to get the defense offside before they ran the play. That's what this is telling me right here. They were trying to get the defense offsides before they ran the play. Let me see some real quick. Um, one nineteen remaining in the game. Yeah. Miami started at the 20. Total time 119. I just had to see. I just wanted to see the game situation. Uh all right. Yep. Okay, cool. That tells me what I need to know. All right. So Tyreek blows this. They wanted to give a hard count and nobody moved, but Tyreek screwed it up. It was a hike to see if they can get a quick five yards from the defense. They didn't get it. They didn't bite on it right there. Now, Teron, um, the right guard said, oh, the blitz coming. You just got the look. They just told you what they were doing. They were sending them all. <laughs> Boy, the Chiefs didn't care. They showed you right here. They were sending them all. Look, ooh. So you are going to have four on the right and four. Maybe four on the left. This guy was going to stay home. But Tyreek moved. Tyreek moved. All 
All right, so now we're third and 13. You got a typical five guys across the line. You got two guys over here. Um, you got trips to the right, empty backfield, tri trip defenders here. There's no help on this right side. But there's also no help on the left, and you got an option guy right here. This is interesting. Send one in motion. They just shifting over, so they're obviously zoned. So same as last time. The same play. We running the same play, but this time they're not blitzing. We're running the same play, but this time they're not blitzing. And look at 32, waiting on a guy coming across the middle. They 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 taking away all the sweet spot. They know two will want to throw the ball on this. And look at Tyree getting bullied down here at the bottom, y'all. He's straight up getting bullied right here. Two ain't looking his way anyway. Tyreek is getting bullied, y'all. So right now, two is going to throw in this flat. They want to just take away what they know he want to go to. And this is what the good teams do to us. They take away these areas where you know most of our routes want to go. Look at this. You already got three guys still in this area. You got the sit down guy. Tua could hit him right away, but it's bang, bang, no first down. Or he could keep staring deep to try to keep everybody backpedaling so he can hit the flat. Then you got the guy coming on the inside. They came prepared for that, and now the pressure on Tua, and he's sacked. Now, here's the problem I have with this. He holding on to the ball. Pocket awareness. Everything's clean right here. It ain't there. You sat there. Get rid of it in the flat. This is a covered sack because we already know where we want to go with the ball, and I'm going to tell you where we wanted to go. Waddle right here coming across like always. But look at the defense they played. They played this to take it away. Tua ain't got no window because this defender was sitting there. And then they're waiting on it, y'all. So you know how they say Miami got a tail? Whatever that tail is, right here on this play, they waiting on it. Let me show you why. We're going to start with number 32. I'm going to be prepared for the underneath and also the lane he loved to throw in. Let me show y'all this. 32 already knows what time it is. 21, this is the spot the ball always ends up. You see that? And this guy right here, just to put a body on him, just in case he go out. Put it, and then he touched him, rerouted him. 21 still staying in that spot where this play usually goes. 32 still messing up the lane. And providing coverage. They like, screw the flat. We know where you're going. And the safeties, just in case somebody go deep. Even if Tua had time to throw this ball, he wanted to go to Waddle. He wanted to go to Waddle the whole time. And he got sacked. Good thing he didn't throw a pick. Good thing he didn't throw a pick. So I'm glad he didn't do that. But you got to take the check down. You got to take the check down. Let me go back to that play, though, real quick, because I want to see who got beat. Who got beat on the line? All right. My bad. Let me go back. Let's see who got beat up on the line. Austin Jackson just got bullied too. Bull rush, come back inside. And that ain't Jones. Just got beat. Austin Jackson, sad face. Sad face. Y'all really think he, he, he he's an improved player? Mm. Interesting. All right, let's move forward because I got like 15 more minutes and then I got to be done for the day. At least done for this session. I might do another one later. All right, so four plays. We have four plays before half. Let's look at those four plays. I have no expectation for the four plays because it was only 18 seconds. All 
All right, two to the right. Uh, fakes the handoff. Uh, this is a two-man route, y'all. This is terrible. This is terrible. This is terrible. Even though this was caught, this is terrible. It was predetermined. Pause right here. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Y'all see this corner right here looking back at Tua? He lucky that this guy didn't didn't stop and sit underneath. He did stop, but he was in bad position. He let his momentum carry him a little too far. That's why he had that extra step. That he lucky. He lucky that guy had that extra step because technically, why ain't you throwing this ball to Tyreek right here? Remember what we talked about earlier? Now, don't tell me nobody open. Why aren't you putting this by the sideline to Tyreek? Y'all see this? Safety couldn't make a play on that. Just like the safety was no. no. Why ain't you putting that on the sideline of Tyree? And he lucky that corner did, um, took that extra step. I want you to look at this corner, right? The corner knows he's going to come underneath to waddle because they play in quarters. The corner knows at some point right about here, here, the corner. You see how he's turning around? He knows waddle's getting the ball, but it, that he's, he kind of like stumbled one extra step. You see that stumble right there? That, that wide lay stumble right there. He tried to stop, but his momentum took him one more step. That might have been a pick. Uh, I'm not going to say Tua can't make that throw to Tyree. Let me see how what the distance is. Right here, he needs to put that ball about right up in here. So that would have been for him 10, 20, 35 yards. He can make that throw. That's 35 air yards. Tua can do that. Tua can get that ball even further. But he can get that ball up here. Definitely. Yes. And he got the hip turned of the safety right here. The safety's already at an angle to try to come this way. That's why it should have already been thrown. Tua can definitely make this throw. He just went with the predetermined read. He went with the predetermined read. Lucky for him, the, uh, the corner and quarter stumbled to not be able to make that play. And the reason why I highlight plays like this, even though they work out, because in the season, you're going to see some of these plays that don't work out. And we'll be like, oh, he should have took the over the top. Even the ones where they work out sometimes, he should have took the over the top. Now, there's sometimes where the safety's in a great position. There, there's times on film that I've seen the safety already over here. Then, yeah, you should you should take Waddle, but he throws it deep then. So I don't know what to guess in those situations. It's all a guess. This whole offense is a guess. But I will say this, that's a nice chunk, only having 18 seconds. Now you got about 10 seconds. So here we are, two to the right, two to the left, running back in the back. We only got a three-man rush here. Three-man rush. Tua. I don't know what that's about, especially with a clean pocket. Hold on, let me check the pocket out. Oh, heck no. I don't know what's going on. Now I got to see in the secondary what happened. Tried to do a pick play, and the guy failed, but it didn't matter if he failed. The ball was going the wrong way. He didn't fall, but he stumbled, but it didn't matter. It's a wasted play.
I don't know what we were thinking there. Man to man coverage. We're just not good in that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we also got a penalty. They might have called the pick play, even though it didn't work out. Fakes the handoff. Another three man rush. More man coverage. With safety help. Man coverage with safety help. We don't know what to do. Why are we going deep on this? I mean, that's a little crease, NFL crease. I guess you could take that shot. But I also like the flat trying to go up the sideline, but it's at the end of the quarter, so I ain't mad at that. No, that's just a terrible shot. Oh, he dropped the pick. Yeah, he, he, he's taking reckless shots. It's at the end of the quarter, but you don't want no pick six right here, man. Underthrown and just sailed inside. Never had a shot. I bet you that safety's like, man, I just missed the easy one. Look at the safety. Just dropped it. Too much predetermined for this team. All right, we're on the other side of halftime. Let's get back to it. Two to the right, one to the left. All right, quarters again. People have highlighted this play and say, oh, I can't believe he dropped that. But let's look at this. There is a panic setting in, obviously. Why did he panic, though? It's like he's dying to get the ball there. He's telling the defense, and he absolutely has no pressure. Are y'all seeing what I'm seeing, or am I tripping? It's like he's panicking for no reason. You see that? Am I tripping? Y'all let me know in the chat. He's panicking for no reason. Why is he scared to get hit and nobody around him? And they got mad at the tight end for dropping that, but the tight end couldn't even see the ball because the defender was in the sight. And it came so fast. I don't get where the rush was, even though I will say this, they were all over it. I know why this happened. I see why it happened now. I see why it happened. I'm going to show y'all. Tyreek always, not Tyreek, Waddle always tell you the answer. Waddle always give you the answer. Here we are on first and 10, and Mike McDaniel designed the play to just go there. That's it. There was no options on that play. It was designed to go there. I'm going to show you why. Look at Waddle turning around. Did he catch it? Nope. Because, and again, if we're progression-based, I've seen Tua made this throw a million times right away. Look at Waddle right away, y'all. Bam! I've seen Tua make that throw a million times. He hesitated. Now, was he scared because that guy was coming in the lane? Which the ball usually is already out. And you wait for him to clear, and then you hit Waddle again if you want. But Tua is only two options. This should have went to Waddle. Now, I'll give him a pass because he got scared that he could. this could have been a pick six right there. If he would have threw that right away to Waddle, cock back right there because he wants to go to Waddle. Well, I don't know why he just fired it. It wouldn't have been picked right there. But now it would be picked if you're trying to fire it. See, it's his initial hesitation that killed him on this play. Watch this. Fire. Oh, man, let, me, let me try to get that arm up. Right there, right here. I don't know if y'all y'all see that arm up motion. And I, I want to stop it right on it. You see how he picked it up? 
he wanted to go to Waddle. I don't know why he didn't. And that little hesitation, now you wanted to go to Waddle again, but it would have been picked. So don't panic. You don't see any pressure around you. Now fire it to Waddle on anticipation right underneath. Fire it right here to Waddle like you always do, but instead you panic. You're like, I got to hurry up and get rid of it right there. And I think what part of the problem is right before halftime, they were hitting them. They sacked them. Y'all remember? And I think he carried that into the second half right there. All right, second play. Two to the right. Once again, motion in the backfield. Is this another predetermined play to the flat? Yep. Another predeterminer. Gets about four or five yards, but another predetermined play. It looked like the only plays that's working are the predetermined, but we also see in some of the predetermines that's not working, but we don't think they're predetermined. Most people don't think they're predetermined. Tua back to pass on, what's this, third and five. Now we got what you would say is man coverage with safety help. Man coverage across the board with safety help. To a sack. Oh, oh, he escaped the sack and took a hit. Let's look at this again. So, Tyreek's man, slot, linebacker has Waddle, safety help, one on one right here. This linebacker following the running back, you could tell he's looking at him. This is man coverage across the board, safety help. So everybody's man, but you got two safeties, cover two man press without actually pressing because they were going to press with Tyreek, as you can see, coming off the line of scrimmage in motion. As soon as Tyreek went in motion, he got in his face to press. So this man press coverage, pause right here, hand on. Hand on. He had his hand on back here, but he's already running deep. Safety's going to follow. Inside help because they know Waddle Love running that inside. This is the one-on-one. -on -one. Waddle cuts inside, but they know it. That's why they get physical, and Waddle was coming back outside. Great defense. Tua now in trouble to his right. Rolling right. It's a wrap. Man coverage, ladies and gentlemen. Man coverage. Look at two in the pocket. This is a fresh, clean pocket, but nobody there because it's man coverage. So that first read ain't there. What he looking at first ain't there. O-line breaks down. Who in the heck getting beat that bad to flush two out? That's on the left. That's on the right guard. That's on the right guard. Hey, what, what number is Robert Hunt? That's number 68 of somebody. That's on the right guard. Third and five. Jermaine said nobody came open. This is the point. It's man coverage. Man coverage. This is why I'm telling you, Miami's offense ain't what you think. You run man press coverage, this team is bad. This team is bad. Man press coverage. Um, We're putting the ball, so I'm going to get out of here. Because, I again, go to Bleacher. Uh, not Bleacher. I'm saying Bleacher Report. Go to um, Bet US TV. All right. I'm about to be live with Dan Mitchell and another guest on Bet US TV. They're actually calling me on the video chat now. So, y'all come through. Bet US TV. I will be live in literally like 12 minutes. So come show your love, show your support, and don't forget we got our show starting on Monday, The Huddle, all right? Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. We'll get back into this later on. We're going to keep going over film. Thanks, William. It's time, to be honest, this game shows who we really are. We need another quarterback to take a challenge to a spot as QB1. Uh, maybe if Tua sits, it might um, push him to focus and improve his flaws. Time always tells, bro. Time always tells. All right, y'all. Love y'all. Appreciate you. Got to get out of here. See you soon.